Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Having a well-defined terms of sale is critical for reptile transactions, whether you're on the buying end or the selling end. Today I'm going to go over my own terms of sale in case you're considering possibly buying a boa from me or in case you are putting together your own terms of sale document and are looking for some ideas. I'm also going to take out a few of my favorite boas, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Having your terms of sale in writing is really important to provide for the buyer before you complete a sale. And if you're buying a reptile, it's really important to get the terms of sale from the seller prior to agreeing to the transaction. And so previously I've had several versions of these documents. They were never quite what I wanted. So I recently spent quite a bit of time and wrote out my terms of sale in a little bit more explicit detail covering you know quite a few different aspects of the sale. I also have changed my policies regarding a few things uh, based on what I did in the past so I'm going to get to those in a minute but if you're new to breeding reptiles it's good to think about this you know provide any uh, sales of terms up front you know it's always possible you might enter into a transaction the buyer thinks it's you know the rules so to speak are one way when in your head you think it's another way and then you know something goes wrong and then there's a lot of finger pointing and name calling and it just gets really ugly so it's very very important to have this up front so everybody knows what they're entering into okay so this is my terms of sale a, a number of things um, if you want to read this in its entirety I posted a link where you can go to, to download the terms of sale and read them and the link is in the description underneath this video so go check that out I'm gonna go over the high points right now uh, so the first aspect is availability of animals I operate on a first come first serve basis okay and the after the boas are born in the summer or fall I establish them which means they need to be eating at least four times they need to shed at least twice and be completely healthy before I will sell them so it's typically about two months after birth before they go up to for sale I don't do waiting lists and I actually did a video previously going into explicit detail why I don't do waiting lists so check out that video Video if you're interested in it but first come first serve and I reserve the right to refuse sale to anybody uh, you know I want my animals to go to the best possible homes okay second aspect are the photos and so I of course provide photos of my animals you want to see what you're getting into of course no photo can really show you how beautiful some of these animals are and I really want you to be blown away so that when you open up the package the animal is much much better than you thought based on the photo but I will provide photos showing the animals um, often I have video clips I show animals in my YouTube videos which is you know a great reason for to watch these videos you can see the animal in the flesh so to speak but there's a limit to how many photos I can take and in the past people so certain people have just requested more and more and more photos and for example they might have a boa on a payment plan and they've already paid off half but they want like update photos every week and I can't do that in the future I can't just keep taking these photos it takes a huge amount of bandwidth and if you were getting a photo at a professional photo studio you probably would pay 50 100 bucks for a sitting so again I will provide representative photos but there is a limit to this I will unless noted otherwise uh, indicated the photo you get will be the animal you get but uh, in the future depending on how things go I may need to have representative photos where I show a similar animal or a representative animal from the litter but I will clearly illust I will clearly define you know in an online ad if that's the case you know if you see a photo if I don't define otherwise that is the animal you're gonna get all right payment so I've also revised my terms surrounding payment uh, from now on I'm only going to accept check or money order so you can send me a personal check if you send a personal check it's got to clear my bank um, it, my preference would be postal money orders you just have to go to the post office pay a small fee get the money order put it in the mail to me I know this is a little less convenient than PayPal I've been thinking a lot about PayPal lately and I've heard and read online a lot of horror stories about transactions gone wrong with PayPal people getting screwed um, people have told me I'm crazy to continue accepting it based on what happened to them so in the future I've decided not to do PayPal or credit cards I'm not a business I'm a private hobbyist okay payment plans this is another change moving forward I'm not going to do payment plans on a regular basis I was doing this in the past 
and you know certain times people would put a down payment and then they would back out later on and you know I told them up front that the 25% down payment is not refundable because I've taken the animal off the market and taken care of it and you know put bandwidth into that and then I get all these sometimes I get nasty emails or I got people begging me you know stories about how they're going to be evicted you know that's your personal deal you know I, I feel for you but you know I from now on sorry no no payment plans the one exception will be if it's like a really expensive snake like thousands of dollars or if I can't ship the snake for an extended period of time like maybe meant several months over you know the course of a winter or something but other than that I'm not going to do payment plans a hundred percent of the payment is due up front uh, for the animal okay so packing I'm super careful packing up my animals I use styrofoam line boxes uh, each animal is individually in a either bag or like a deli style container um, you know I, I really take seriously the safety and the safe shipment of my animals so um, I put a lot into it I put a lot of stress and effort into making sure that the shipment is goes hundred percent you know safely I use heat packs if necessary in cooler weather um, my shipping is by FedEx priority overnight and another change is from now forward you need to go to the FedEx ship center to pick up your animals in the past some of my animals were going to the, uh, to a person's address it would go to FedEx and then it would be put on a truck and then they drive around for you know however many hours till they got to the address and then they would drop it off and so that's much higher risk than if it just goes to the FedEx ship center and a lot of people insist on going to the FedEx ship center because they don't want anything bad to happen to their animal so from now forward you need to go to the FedEx ship center and this isn't a local FedEx or a lot of local small-time FedEx providers it's got to be a ship center so if you're in doubt let me know your address I can tell you your closest FedEx ship center Okay, so I, when at all possible, I ship on Tuesdays. So I, the animal goes out Tuesday afternoon. It arrives at the FedEx Ship Center Wednesday morning, typically by 10.30 a.m. And the reason for this is Tuesday is statistically the day where you have the least likelihood of delays or anything going wrong. Um, in some cases, I will ship on a Monday for arrival Tuesday morning or on a Wednesday for arrival Thursday morning, but I do prefer to ship on Tuesdays. I will always check in with you prior to shipping. I'm never going to ship something out unless I explicitly know that you're expecting it and you're going to go to pick it up. Um, I've had in the past a few times where a shipment is delayed a full day, so it's supposed to arrive on, it goes out Tuesday it's supposed to arrive Wednesday it doesn't arrive till Thursday and so whenever this has happened my animals have been 100% safe you know none of them have died it's always you know it's been a bit of a nail biter but it's always worked out and you know typically it's low risk with FedEx the animals are securely packaged with heat packs if applicable and they don't really they're not being exposed to really cold temperatures because they're inside the FedEx warehouse or the FedEx ship center so it's really relatively low risk that being said Tuesday is the day with the least possibility for delays so whenever possible I ship on Tuesday and finally my guarantee I guarantee live arrival provided you pick up the animal on the day of arrival at FedEx so you need to be ready to go to FedEx get your animal um, if you don't pick up on the day and it sits around at FedEx for a few days, I can't guarantee live arrival. As soon as you open the box, please, or as soon as you receive the package, open the box, inspect everything. Let me know immediately if you have any issues. If you don't have any issues, which is I hope what you're gonna experience, please let me know also. Uh, I guarantee all the animals are gonna be live, healthy, mite-free, eating voluntarily either on frozen thawed or live and I always try to move my animals to frozen thawed before they go out but a lot of the dwarf boas they just don't eat frozen thawed at that young age so I'll let you know if it's live or frozen thawed um, I guarantee the animals are captive born and bred at my facility unless I tell you otherwise um, and you should be hundred percent satisfied um, but you need to notify me within 24 hours of any issues okay and if there is something that happens your animal dies for some reason during shipment I will replace it or refund your money 
Okay, the next point, all sales are final. I don't have returns on animals. So if a week after the purchase, you have a nice Suriname red tail boa, but you decided you wanted a Peruvian red tail, you want to ship it back and get a refund, that uh, is impossible. The one exception I will say, sometimes I do buy back animals. And you know, several times I've bought back a baby that I sold to somebody and it grows up for a few years. And for whatever reason, they're getting out. You know, and I've been really happy to buy those animals back. So it's not really a return, but you know, the animal is returning here a couple years later. And finally, my commitment. I'm 100% committed to making your experience perfect and I really care about my animals. I want them to go to the best houses. Um, and if you're, you're gonna enter into a breeding program, I really want them to contribute to the boa gene pool. So I'm gonna offer you my decades of experience with boas and other reptiles. That's why I do these uh, YouTube videos. Um, so you're not just paying for the boa, you're also paying for my expertise and you know my help. Um, but please do your research prior to getting a boa. Okay, I've made hundreds of videos on this channel on virtually every aspect of boas. You know, lots of different types of boas, all the locality boas, lots of morph boas, lots of you know housing and husbandry related, breeding related. Just go to my uh, YouTube library, check out different playlists, check out different videos. Um, you know, throw me ideas if you want other videos. But as I mentioned, I'm more than happy to help, and that's why I set up this YouTube channel. But you know, the ultimate responsibility has to be with you. So if you do buy a boa or any other animal for that matter, please be 100% committed to its proper husbandry and with the expectation that it might survive for decades in captivity. Um, finally, my contact info. People lately have been asking about websites, which I think is kind of archaic since with social media, I thought websites went extinct about 20 years ago, but I don't have a website. I have Facebook, I have Instagram, I have YouTube here. Um, on Facebook, my, my uh, user ID is Brian Boas. Uh, on Instagram, it's the Lemon Boa, and I'll put a link to my Facebook and Instagram under the video in the description so you can go check it out. But, you know, I think YouTube is really my central contact with my, you know, my, for lack of a better word, followers, my customers, my people interested in what I'm doing. I don't really contribute that much to Facebook or Instagram anymore for multiple reasons. So lots of updates here on Instagram or on, here on YouTube. And thanks everybody for supporting this channel over the last couple of years. Okay, so that was in a nutshell are my terms. If you have any questions, comments, clarifications, please send me a message or make a comment below and I'll respond to it. In the last few minutes, I wanted to give you guys an update on some of my favorite boas, some that I haven't really gotten out for the camera lately. And I thought I'd start with this beautiful female uh, Bolivian Amaralli boa, boa constrictor Amaralli, the short tail boa. This is a female who's now six years old. Um, she is of the uh, Joe Terry bloodline known as the orange crush bloodline. It has this beautiful orangey purple colors. And so this female um, is now sexually mature. I'm planning on pairing her up in the 2021 to 2022 breeding season. So excited about that. Amaralli is you know, one of the few subspecies of boa constrictor I haven't successfully bred yet. Uh, this female is pretty beefy. She's, you know, the, the Amaralli have this really stocky appearance and they're really muscular. And so this girl is really beefed up in the last few years. Just gotten quite a bit thicker around. She's got kind of this short, stocky head, almost like a pit bull. A real cool boa, real smart boa, you know, responsive to the, uh, to the owner. They seem to kind of enjoy interacting with me. And so we'll have to see, you know, that uh, I really like to breed these animals next year, but we'll just have to see if they're in the mood, so to speak. Here's another 2021 to 2022 first time female breeder. This is a long tail boa, boa constrictor longicata. And this female is probably my favorite of my four adult animals. Just beautiful, beautiful animal. Just gorgeous head markings with the dark head markings. You know, this beautiful, you know, yellowish, uh, brownish uh, background color. You know, gorgeous example. This animal is also het for anorethristic, so it's luck I might have some anorethristic uh, longicata boas next year. And so this year was a great year in that it was the first year I, I bred the 
Longicata in captivity, my other female, gave birth and had a beautiful litter. These animals, of course, are going to be for sale shortly, and a lot of you guys are interested, so please stay tuned for that. But really looking forward to the possibilities with this female. Check out the gorgeous speckling on the belly. And just overall, this is probably my darkest female, but also very high contrast to the background marking. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous example of the tombs boa, long tail boa, or boa constrictor longicata. Also known as boa imperator longicata, you know, to be complete. The theme for today is 2021 to 2022 female breeders. And so our last animal is this beautiful uh, Coops Pastel Colombian boa. And so this is a, a female who's about six years old. She's getting pretty big, you know, pretty stocky boa. Um, I actually paired up this animal this year. Unfortunately, it didn't take. Sometimes when I first pair up a pairing, it's just not successful for whatever reason and it takes the second try. Sometimes I have to kind of mix things up a bit, but we'll have to see how this goes in 2021 to 2022. So really hopeful. You can see the beautiful oranges of this animal. This is one was produced by Vin Russo and is one of the most orange boas he's produced. Just a gorgeous deep color saturation. Lots of speckling, really cool animal. So, you know, classic example of a normal boa, a normal common boa, and how beautiful these animals can be. Um, they're also great pets, and I really enjoy taking this animal out and holding her. And, you know, as I've said many times before, my number one all time suggestion for a boa pet is just your simple, normal, common variety boa imperator, such as this one. So, really looking forward to this pairing for next year. So that was a few of my 2021 to 2022 breeding females. Um, hope that the terms of sale was helpful to you. Remember, if you want to read it, you can go to the link in the description below this video. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.